Hey there, uh, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the course. Uh, this is lesson number 11. And in this lesson, we're going to go over search functionality. So we're going to work with our uh, search controller and uh, search bar. And we're going to implement uh, our search functionality because right now, if you put software and let's city uh city of seattle it won't really do anything because we haven't implemented it yet so in this lesson we're going to implement that functionality and uh we're going to go over um like the basic functionality for the search bar there are so many methods that you can you can implement on the search bar and there's so many ways you can configure your results and work with your results when you work with a search functionality and with a search bar but we won't go over each and every case because it is pretty simple app and uh, honestly we don't need the whole lot of um, methods to handle our results we can but really for this purpose we just need to handle two search bars at the same time and uh, provide the accurate result. We will go over throttling, so and we will implement timer because when you work with the um, search bar, what is going to happen? Your search functionality is going to uh, is going to uh, perform really really quickly, and you don't want that. You want user to give a little bit more time, a little bit of a breathing room so uh, your user can actually type in the um, search term and get the results because uh, if your search will, uh, will be happening as user typing in the request then it may not be accurate or it may not it may be premature and it's especially accurate when you have to handle two search bar two search bars so um let's go ahead and get started it will make so much sense when we actually start coding first and foremost first and foremost when you implement search bar functionality you have to provide you have to set up delegate so search controller search bar delegate self search CD so like uh, let me show you like this is the search controller search bar we set up the de uh, we set up the delegate for the search bar and the second search bar is the CD search bar and we also set up uh, the, uh, the delegate to itself without the delegate without that piece of code your search functionality won't work so i stumble uh at this weird bug when i was developing this application so many times i implement the search and the search is not working i didn't know why and i just forgot to set up my delegate really 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 important and also um we going to make a slight modification here. We're going to say navigation item uh, hide, hide search bar when scrolling equal false. So uh, the search bar is going to be always there, just like just as it is like right here, uh, because we forgot to set it up when we were developing and setting up our search bar. Up to you, it won't affect the functionality itself. It's just, it's just my personal preference. It's up to you whether or not you want to implement it. So let's go ahead with implementation. And uh, we're going to call a method because we provide the delegate for, um, uh, we, we confirm to a protocol for a search bar protocol. So, and we're going to say a search bar. So we're going to use this uh, method. So search bar, UI search bar, uh, text change and search text. So it's a very basic uh, API, very basic uh, method that you normally would use when you work with your search. 
Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, as I mentioned before, uh, it's really good idea. I would say it it is must have to implement timer or throttling for your search bar because, like I said, you don't want to provide premature search result to your user. So how do we do that? We create a variable. We're gonna call it timer and the type is going to be of timer and it's going to be optional all right all right so we have a challenge here and that challenge actually bugged me for a little bit uh, here we have a position and we have location and uh, in our method, we have like the search term, the search text is only like, it's only one thing, but we, we need to handle two of them at the same time as user typing in. What do, like, what, how do we do that? How do we handle, how do we ensure that we have two pieces of information that we absolutely need to have? in order to perform our search. How do we do that? So luckily, Swift has uh, something like if let. If let is a conditional statement, um, basically meaning uh, that the piece of code that you're going to include in that condition won't happen unless that condition is met. So, and we're going to implement it right now. So we're gonna say if let position equals search controller search bar text and another let and it's going to be the, in the same condition city equals uh, city search bar text so if that conditional a condition is met if that condition is met then we're going to perform our search so we have our timer. Uh, it's really important to invalidate our timer, to uh, remove the timer from our object, to remove that timer from that run, uh, loop run. Because if you don't do it, it will, it will be there. Uh, and it's not a good thing. And what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna say timer, invalidate. So it's going to invalidate our timer when we're not using our timer. So, and um, we're going to say uh, timer equals timer, schedule timer, schedule timer and uh, schedule interval so we're going to say uh, 0 0.5 repeats and we're gonna say uh, false so we don't want to repeat our timer so once the timer is done it is done and then we're going to execute uh, a piece of code in our closure so we're going to leave it blank because we're not going to use um, any variable or anything in this closure really but we're just going to execute a, a piece of code a piece of functionality that we really want to that we really want to that we really want to execute so and in this closure we're going to call our uh, network layer our fetch uh, fetch jobs 
or fetch results. So we're gonna say um, we actually going to um, copy this. We're actually going to copy this. We're going to cut it. And we're going to paste it right here. And instead of the, the description, we're going to say um, uh, position. And instead of San Francisco, we're going to say city. So everything else looks normal. Everything else looks okay. Uh, and uh, um, let's go ahead, like, let's remove the extra space. Uh, let's go ahead and run our app one more time. Now we don't have any position. And if we say software San Francisco, here we go. Now we have our our jobs. Now we have our position. And something happened over here. Software San Francisco. Okay. So, um, so now our search functionality is working correctly and um, our app is basically done. Now what we need to do is set up our failure method if for some reason we have a failure and we are not able to, we're not able to display the results and we're going to handle that in the alert. So uh, let's talk about failures and it's really important for us as a, like as software developers to communicate with user when things are going south, when things are not going the way user expects. So uh, one, one way to do it is provide the alert and say like, hey, something went wrong and we do have that utility um, an error message enum that we can utilize like right here in our alert con in our alert controller and display it because it is a ui element we're going to perform it on the main thread remember last lesson when we're talking when we're talking about a network layer that network layer is happening on the background thread, but whenever we have to update our collection view or perform anything with UI, we have to bring it to the main to the main thread. So we're going to utilize dispatch queue, dispatch queue uh, main uh, sync code, and we're going to create uh, let. And see uh, alert controller UI alert uh, UI oh what am I doing uh, UI alert controller um, we're going to use title like our title will be error um, let's wait for Swift to yield at S and and no uh, yes we do want to utilize roar. Uh, like raw value. So like raw value is that string that we provide in our uh, enum. So that that string will be displayed there. Uh, message will be um, uh, nil because we provide the message here and uh, pref uh, preferred time will be alert. And uh, whenever you deal with the alert controller, you have to provide action. And see, add action, UI alert action, title for our title, we're going to use OK. Uh, style is going to be uh, 
default and we're not gonna have any like handler like we're okay with that handler so and uh, the last piece of the alert we're going to present it so we will present our alert self uh, present and see animator true so should work just fine and uh, to trigger that to trigger that alert uh, please go ahead and if you work on the simulator on your simulator turn off your Wi-Fi you will live I promise turn off your Wi-Fi and try to start looking for oh well, as soon as you start looking for things it will say sorry something went wrong try again so I want to show you something it's this message is really clear right so um, if we say a localized description and run it again our message won't be as clear won't be as simple uh, so the operation can be performed you have jobs API course error message zero does it make sense like yes I do understand that the action cannot be performed but what does error message zero means like I have no as a user I have no idea so that's why we created a custom error message for our user so uh, we can actually display it in the human language so a human can understand um, and like just know that something went wrong software yeah something went wrong I we, we cannot do that and like if here uh, if we look at the logs here like it says that like you have no internet connection and this is it for our um, github jobs API I hope you guys enjoy this course and uh, I hope it was useful and let me bring back uh, my Wi-Fi And I'm going to say software uh, Seattle. And now we have one position in Seattle. So let me know if you have any questions. And if you are interested in the whole course, go to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist where I group all the videos related to the course together go to my LinkedIn page and look at my articles I will create an article dedicated specifically for this lesson as well as the whole course the whole course all together so this is the official last lesson like uh, we handle all the functionality that we need to handle we can perform search and like if I go there uh, I can go to oh a uh, link is not available I cannot go there um, but I can go and apply for that job and learn more information over there so um, yeah um, I probably will post extra lessons or bonus lessons like uh, there are plenty of things that we can improve for example when we perform search we can use activity indicator or a HUD um, that will spin and provide user a message what is going on um, oh, we haven't talked about accessibility uh, and how to implement accessibility in our app um, we haven't talked about how to perform different sizes for how to create adjustable size 
for your cells like if you have like a lot of information in your cell so it will stretch out a little bit if you have less information it will be shorter and things like that so we haven't covered those topics so if I do have time I will probably create those uh, extra lessons but like the main app the main course is there I hope you guys enjoy let me know if you have any questions let me know what other courses you're interested in what other types of apps you're interested in and I will try to make it happen I will try to teach you how to do it and if I don't know how to do it I will teach myself first and then teach you how to do it thank you and I will see you in the next video Bye.